Rand Paul took to the Senate floor to talk about ISIS, and he made some, unfortunately, spot-on points about democratic hypocrisy when it comes to war. It's not that I'm against all intervention. I do see ISIS as a problem. ISIS is now a threat to us. But I see our previous policy as having made it worse. I supported the decision to go into Afghanistan after 9-11. There are valid reasons for war. They should be few and far between. They should be very importantly debated, not shuffled into a 2,000 page bill and shuffled under the rug. When we go to war, it's the most important vote that any senator will ever take. Many on the other side have been better on this issue. When there was a Republican in office, there were loud voices on the other side. I see an empty chamber. There will be no voices against war because this is a Democrat president's war. That is something, the hypocrisy of that should resound in this nearly empty chamber. Unfortunately, that's right. That's totally true. In fact, more Republicans opposed war in Syria and arming the Syrian rebels and further action in Iraq. Now, look, the Republicans did it, let's be honest, because they're anti-Obama no matter what he does. No matter what he does, okay? But there's also democratic hypocrisy here, because they do fancy themselves the more anti-war party, the smarter party, the party that's not gonna fall in line like we have an authoritarian dictator of a leader, but that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. Only 10 Democrats, 10, voted against Obama's plan to arm Syrian rebels. And understand something, man, like Rand just said right there, it was buried in a bill that was a continuing resolution to continue to fund the government. So they, they put it in in a very nefarious way to almost make it like you had to vote for it. Okay, like you really had to take a stand uh, to not vote for it. And like we spoke about before, there were stories from last week that the Free Syrian Army, who we are arming and who the Congress just approved to arm, they just made a peace deal with ISIS. Now, remember, we're arming them to fight ISIS. But they just made a peace deal with them. Why? This is very important, because John Kerry said, no, that's not true, it's not good information, that's not right. I don't believe John Kerry. I don't believe him for a, for a second. Now, why am I saying that, and what's my evidence? They have a common enemy. They're both fighting Assad. So Assad is a Shiite and an Alawite, he's the head of Syria, and there's the revolution going on, and the FSA, they're Sunni, and ISIS is Sunni. Now granted, uh, ISIS, they're Sunni extremists and fundamentalists, and they're doing jihad, and the FSA is essentially trying to liberate Syria and make it Sunni leadership, but at the moment, they have a common enemy, so they made a peace deal with each other and promised not to fight each other, and now America's sending arms to the FSA under the assumption they're going to use those arms to fight ISIS. So, in other words, this is Ronald Reagan and the Mujahideen all over again. Remember, we armed the Mujahideen when they were fighting a war against the Soviet Union because we hated the Soviet Union so much, and what happened? The Mujahideen later broke up into Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, and they used those arms against us. Well, this is the same fucking thing. Every time we arm somebody, it always works out for the worse. And the Democrats, who were lions under President Bush, who would give fiery speeches against war on the floor, now they're not. Now, all of a sudden, they're, uh, they're like, um, maybe I guess we could vote for war this time because it's a Democratic president and because ISIS is really bad and we don't like them. Look, ISIS, yes, they're horrible people, they're disgusting, they're grotesque, but they're the same as Al-Qaeda, they're the same as Al-Nusra Front, they're the same as Al-Shabaab, they're the same as Ansar al-Sharia and Boko Haram. In fact, Al-Qaeda right now has a bigger stronghold than uh, ISIS does. We just don't talk about it. It's in northern Mali, the news isn't covering it, but it's there. Same with Boko Haram. They hold and govern portions of Nigeria. Jihadists hold and govern. But we just don't talk about that as much. But these are the, the same ideology, the same group of people. Just in one case, we get super angry about it. In the other case, we don't get uh, all that angry about it. And look, you should be angry at all of it. That's not even the discussion we're having. What we're saying is how should we respond to it? And by arming rebels and by bombing and by getting involved, we're just breeding more hatred against the U.S. Because like always happens, we end up killing so many civilians and then the population gets further radicalized and they hate us more. 
And also, I mean, do you want us to, who wants us to be allies with Hezbollah right now in the Middle East? Because that's what we're doing. We're, we're allies with the Kurds and Shiite militia and Hezbollah to fight ISIS. So what happens? Okay, you kick ISIS out of the Sunni portions of Iraq, and then what? Shiite Hezbollah takes it over. You trade one evil for another evil. And we have young American men and women putting their lives on the line for what? For what? So you can pick between the Sunnis and the Shiites and who holds the area? How about we don't get involved and then we wouldn't be a fucking target? Did you know ISIS never said anything about America until we bombed them? Then all of a sudden we were on their uh, radar and then journalists, Western journalists started getting beheading, beheaded. Did you know that uh, they wear, they put orange jumpsuits on the journalists they beheaded? Why? Because they said this is the same color that the people wore at Guantanamo Bay. And America did wrong in Guantanamo Bay. We're, just, we're getting them back for it. Think about that. What does that show you? Now, look, these are not rational people. They're religious fundamentalists, and they're crazy people, and they're barbarians, and they're savages, so on and so forth. But it does show you, if we didn't go into Iraq in the first place, if we didn't have Guantanamo Bay open, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't go in guns blazing in the Middle East at the drop of a pin all the time, then maybe we wouldn't be in this situation we're in right now. Or... Maybe the situation would be less bad. Look, if we never went into Iraq in the first place, you know who would be in control right now? Saddam Hussein. You know what Saddam Hussein would have done with ISIS? Crush them on a Tuesday before brunch. Okay? So, uh, we need to realize that perpetual war is not the right idea, and unfortunately, it takes Rand Paul, a libertarian-ish guy, to actually be somewhat principled on this issue, when they're, the Democrats are just flip-flopping all over the place, like a fish fresh out of water. The only other Democrats to give credit, I think it was um, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders were two Democrats who voted against funding these Syrian rebels. Good on them. But they did make some hawkish statements, which is unfortunate. But good on them and good on Rand Paul. That's it. Only the 10 Democrats who did the right thing. I mean, that's all you can give credit to here. I mean, the, the plan to arm Syrian rebels passed with over 70 votes in the Senate. That's beyond pathetic.